So would you say yesterday, and or I would say this week, is an NFL agent's favorite time of the year to just be truthful and honest about the <laughs> length and terms of these contracts that are handed out? I mean, this is yeah. life-changing stuff here. And everything we see, all the reports, all of that is accurate, correct? As far as agents go <laughs> and, and what is out there? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, just, you know, like some of the terms, like the length of these four-year deals, these five-year deals. Do you remember when Geno Smith's was announced as a three-year, $105 million deal? Well, yeah. And come to find out, we were $30 million off. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's pretty significant. That is right? significant. <laughs> like a three-year, seventy-five million dollar deal versus a three-year, one hundred five million dollar deal. That hits different to everyone. Like to the player, obviously the agent, but even the team. They're like, wait, what? One hundred five? Like we we didn't sign him to that. <laughs> I mean, that was what was reported. Like you can Google search that. That that's not. I mean, this this stuff happens all the time, and even more than that. Like just look at the guarantees it's signing. That's usually how this works. And, and, and the total guarantees, there's probably a portion that's you know, in there for injury only, which means if the player gets to a certain point after a year or two, th- those guarantees aren't guarantees to him. You know, the team can move on, and, and this is that time of year where agents will blow up everyone in the media to report these deals, and a year or two from now, some of these players are not even on these teams. Yet we're, we're you know, lauding them as big signings, and it's going to change the course of this, this organization. It happens every single year. You have to think about this logically. If you have a player that you don't want to leave, you are extending him, or are you going to tag him and trying to buy more time to find a way of extending him? You are not letting him get to free agency if he means that much to your team. So that's the tough part I have when I, you're always looking at these things. <sighs> they pulled a plug on Geno Smith in a heartbeat. Like, just know that. Like, super quickly, they'll pull it on, on Geno. It ain't working out. He ain't that. He gone. Like, that's going to be a quick one if if he doesn't continue to play at a high level. And then for what it's worth, I mean, maybe that's how it's supposed to be, you know, at this point in, in somebody's career that, you know, it, that's where he's at. But – in terms of, of where things are with free agency and how things are being handled, I feel like there's like an interesting – this year was a more interesting approach with the whole franchise tag because, to me, I feel like if you don't want to let a guy go, I, I'm on the same page as you don't let them hit free agency. But if we haven't gotten a deal done yet and I want this guy on my team – I'm giving you an exclusive franchise tag. I don't even want anyone to feel as though they can, you know, wine and dine you and take you out and 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 show you that they can perform better than I can. Like I don't want you to perform better than me. I don't I don't want you to show them a better time. I don't want them to know that there's better out there. You know, when you're about to be left, the one thing that a person will say to you You'll never find somebody that'll love you the way that I did. Like, like that's always what people say with their parting words. And then more often than not, they probably do. You know, and it's like kind of like for me, this has just been interesting how many people got the non-exclusive franchise tag. And and I know like all the conversations surrounding, you know, if, if it's collusion and all this other stuff that's going on with some of the players that are out there. But I've kind of taken a like a little bit, uh, I guess, different angle on how I'm looking at it. I think these in such a new age of how things are being done and looking at other sports and how they handle things. It's almost like if I'm looking at it and I'm the NFL, I'm like, look, man, we've done we've done the most ridiculous, amazing thing ever, which is we have set a standard in a precedence where we don't guarantee contracts. Like, nobody else is doing that. You know, if it's basketball, like, you look at all of these conversations about load management. Well, da-da-da this, da-da-da that. Well, you know what? Basketball players, you know, you listen to what Charles Barkley had to say and other guys, and they're talking about load management. These contracts are guaranteed, and the, and the numbers are astronomically high. So your motivation is what it is. Like, if you want to self-preserve yourself, if you don't feel like going out and playing 70-some games a year, you're not going to do it. And it's because you can't do anything about it. 
like win, lose, or draw. Like our team is losing. We need you. This, that, and the other. I don't care. I'm not playing. I'm done for tonight. Like I'm done for this week. Like I'm not doing this game. Like my knee is a little sore. You know, people was like, we talked so many times about how how athletes like persevere and do so many different things. More often than not, we're persevering and we're pushing through because we're trying we're ultimately seeking the ultimate reward of what it is that we're doing, which is getting paid for what we do. Oh, this guy's jaw is broken. He's going to play. This guy's nose is his nose is broken. He's going to play. He's got torn cartilage. Look, he came back. His toe is broke. He's going to play. And you played because you wanted to keep your job. You didn't want to lose your job, and you wanted to get paid. It's different now. And and this this approach to the the non exclusive franchise tag, I just wonder. It's and, and I just wonder if they're doing this now, in a in a, in an attempt to basically like look, it's not going to be better somewhere else. And if it is. It's still not what you think it's going to be. It's like almost like let's do it this way so we can let it play out in a public court of of opinion where you say, listen, you could have the whatever it, whatever opinion you want to have, but this is what it's going to be. It's not going to go beyond this, and we're taking our stand right here. And I wonder if I, I, I just wonder moving forward. You know, you got Burrow coming up. You got you got Herbert coming up. You, you got you got all these guys coming up. Like, what what does the future look like in terms of how contracts are going to be done? Do you, are they going to be ex- unexclusive, non-exclusive franchise tag players? Do you guys remember the first time you had a negotiation or a contract in the NFL where you said, "Oh, it's like that." Oh, okay. Like to where the terms were maybe not everything that you thought they were going to be, or a team tried to short you on this, or a negotiation got a little Bro, bit feisty. Do, do you know who you're talking to about a contract going wrong. Am I? I'm I'm probably in the top five of contracts going wrong in the National Football League. Well, <laughs> so. what is Elvis Doomerville in the fax machine? Where does that stop? Oh yeah, that was bad too. Oh, that yeah. was an interesting one. Yeah, that uh, was <laughs> a six point five million dollar bone, a roster bone is missing, and them saying that it was never there, and that taking my average down the way that it did is that's as bad as it gets, and it is what it is. I so yes, I have had that moment as it is, as it applied <laughs> like, to contracts. I can't even... Like, I don't know. That's why when I see the deals that are handed out yesterday and then you like do you search, you know, digging deep enough on like the Geno Smith contract and it's only a one year deal. I just go, man, like, like what, what are like how do those teams present the terms of this and try and like, oh, you know, well, listen, uh, it's a three year deal. We're going to give you this then, and, and we can get out of it after a year. But don't worry about it. We got this on the back end. We, I just wonder, like, do they fast talk you to try and skip past all the other fine print that is the reality of the situation? Or is it, hey, it's all love. Everything's good to go. And this don't... is what we're going to give you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for some guys, this is what we're going to give you. Like, and if you continue to play well, like he's only played one good year. With the Seattle Seahawks, why would they? Why would they go out of their way to give a crazy ass contract to a guy? You're not sure if this was a a Cinderella situation and the pumpkin goes back at midnight, or he actually can be your long. I don't think anybody's looking at him as a a, a foregone conclusion. He's your long term solution. The, the toughest part about this is. You know, for him, he's played so long at this point. I mean, he, he's 33 years old, and he has his best season at 32. And and so is anyone out there going to look at him and say, okay, like we really want to invest into him to be our long-term starter? Well, you know, the, the reality is long-term at this point in time in his career isn't that long, and especially considering his track record. So the problem is he's got to have another year where it's another prove-it year. So he signs a three-year deal. It's essentially a one-year deal with two years thrown the back end of it. And he has to go out and prove it again. Now, the issue with it is if he does, which, the, you know, the organization giving him an extension, it looks good on the outside. The reality is they're like, yeah, we have team control now. They can trade him. They can restructure it, give him a little bit more. But there's no ties to him. 
I mean, his cap hits the next two. First off, his cap hit this year is only $10 million because he got a, a signing bonus, obviously, to go along with this deal, which helps limit the impact on the actual salary cap. But the next two seasons, like, they can move on from him. There's really no ties. I mean, the, 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 the dead cap hits pretty insignificant. But the, the problem is, is like, what organization is going to say, oh, yeah, at this age, we're going to invest heavily into him? 